So first things first here, let's go and get a form handler set up for our filter form. So we're going to do this just underneath the index method within our posts controller. So for this, we can do public async. Let's call this search. Grab our HTTP context contract there. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring this up to a route as well before we forget. Okay. So route, set this up as a post. Let's do slash posts. We're going to leave our index method as just slash, but everything else that we're going to do within the post, which I believe is just this post method right here, we're going to do as slash post to stick with the resourceful route. And then let's do posts controller dot called our method search there as posts search. Let's also make a validator to make sure that the post form data is actually valid with what we're expecting. So let's do make validator here within Visual Studio Code. I'm going to call this post search. Let's go ahead and grab rules out of here as well. We use that to trim our pattern up. And within our schema, let's go ahead and add our pattern in as the first it's going to be a schema string. It's going to be optional. And then let's do rules.trim to trim that value. Next, we have our post type ID schema. And let's do this one as an enum because we have a specific set of values that we expect for the post type ID. And we actually have an enum for this as well. So if we go within enums, there's a post types. We have our article, blog, and lesson set up. We also have a database table for this as well, just so that they're tied via foreign keys at the database level. So within our post search validator here, we can do object values and then grab the post types enum. But the value from the form here is going to come up as a string and the enum values that we have defined are actual numbers. So we'll also want to convert these values here to a string. So let's go ahead and map, take the value and then just do value to string. And then lastly, we have our order by that's going to be a schema. Now let's also do enum for this as well. Now for this, we don't have an enum yet. So let's go and create one. So within our enums, let's do new file and let's call this post order buys ts enum post order buys and I'm going to jump down to our post filters and I'm just going to copy each of those options and we'll just strip out all of the fluff. So we'll do multi lines here, grab just those values and I'm going to copy those again, paste them, find those as the values. And then the keys here, I'm going to convert to uppercase and then let's also add our commas there at the end. And these values need to be strings. There we go. And then for our post type ID, let's add an additional underscore between post type and ID. And then let's export default post order buys. And then within our validator now, we can go into here and do the exact same thing we did with our post type. So object values, post order buys, just like so. You could also just provide it directly in this enum value here as well. But putting them in an enum also gives us the ability to check it elsewhere in case we need to. And then those values there are already strings, so we don't need to worry about mapping over it and converting it to strings. Cool. So that should be all that we need for our validator. So we should be able to jump back up into our post controller. For our actual search method, we're going to want view, our request, and our response. We can go ahead and validate our forms data. So let's do const data equals await request validate. And we have our post search validator there. And what that'll do is give us back our pattern post type ID and our order by. Now what we need to do is actually query using these fields. So if we actually take a look and compare what we have so far for our search with our index method, you can see we're kind of aligning to do a one to one match here. So what we can do instead is extract everything query wise out of our controller and into a service so that we don't need to actually do it twice in two different methods. So let's go ahead and define a service within our app directory. Let's do new file there. Put this inside of a directory called services and let's do post service.ts export default class post service public static async let's do get filtered list for the name here and there's a lot of different ways depending on the number of filters that you have that you could set up this particular method you could do it just based off of the post search validator uh, you could do a one-to-one -one. so you could do a pattern string and so on and so forth that way you could define your own type that this method in itself would expect for our use case and the filters that we have, I think we're good to go ahead and just use the validator. So let's go ahead and do data of type post search validator, reach for the schema here, and then reach for the props within the schema. And that's going to give us back the actual schema type as the type for our data. So if we wanted to keep things one to one with how we have it currently within our controller, we could extract those out. So pattern, post type ID, and the order by just like so. Let's jump back into our post controller grab this portion right here, which is just the query for our posts and copy this. And let's go within our service again and paste this directly in here. Now we're going to need to re-import our post model just like so. 
And you're gonna notice that our direction is no longer happy because argument of type string is not assignable to ascending, descending, or undefined, which is valid. So I'm no TypeScript whiz, so there may be a better way to go about defining the type correction for this. But since we know that we have valid control over the first index of our direction, we have it validated, we have a set naming structure in place, and this is always going to be descending or ascending based off the way that we have it set up. I'm gonna go ahead and correct it using the as function. We know that the first index is going to be a string, and the second one is going to be descending or ascending. We can take the undefined out since we have this defined one way or the other. And that will fix up our direction squiggly line there. So now that's happy. And now instead of awaiting and returning this back into a variable, we could just return directly from here. So now we have our get filtered list post service method. So let's jump back to our post controller here. Let's reach for all of this and let's do post service dot get filtered list. And now if we were to just try and provide request query string into there, since query string is not defined as a particular type, that's not gonna be happy and it's not gonna suit the type requirements there. Uh, but we can create a new object here, provide in our pattern, our post type ID and our order by just like so, and it will be happy, which aligns us to within our search do directly const post equals await post service dot get filtered list and just provide it in the data that we have directly from the validator. So we can change this back into data within our get filtered list, just provide data there and now that will be happy. And so now all that we need to do is return back the HTML that we wanna swap out in the front end of our application. So for this case, it's going to be return view.render. And this reaches back to the first lesson where we described that our post list is out in its own component the way that it is for a specific reason. If we take a look at this again, everything within here is specific to the data that we have to list out the specific posts that we have for the filtered results. So in terms of our post controller for our search method here, we can reach directly for that component here within our view render method, render out the HTML specific to that component and return it back so that we just have that component's HTML as our response body. So here we can reach for components, post list, and then provide it the data that that component needs, which in this case is our posts. Our response is currently unused, but there is a reason for it there. We'll get to that in the next lesson. So now we have everything set up and ready to go, and we just need to complete our circle by implementing HTMX on our filter form in itself, which we'll do in the next lesson.